The Lord be with you. Amen. Good to have Christ between us. A warm welcome to those who are visiting St. John's. May this time of worship bless you, heal you, renew you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The prayer concerns are listed on our bulletin sheet, and we're remembering baby Kenton Fisher, and uh, I always have trouble with her name. Aisley. Aisley Schmidt and Evelyn Stream and Walker Raymond. We continue to... Aisley is doing great. And Aisley is doing good. We continue to remember uh, those who are bereaved. Bob and Debbie Gibson, Doris Mortensen and Michael Holdren and Marie Chin. And next weekend on Saturday, Michael Holdren and Marie Chin they will be married here at St. John's at 1 o'clock, and we will keep them in our prayers for that as well. We had a baptism last night celebrating the baptism of Merrick Cochran, and it was delightful to see uh, uh, all those pews on that side were all full last night, and people from Alaska had come down for the celebration, and it was wonderful. And then we're blessed this morning with... Uh, Mark and Kathy Stelzer, who sing an offertory hymn that fits right in with the theme today. The theme today is Holy Communion. Last week was baptism. Today, Holy Communion. Shortly, we'll be taking the noisy offering. We are doing that once a month. Remembering this month, we, uh, these offerings are designated to Lutheran Navajo Mission, Arizona. And even though uh, we don't do the children's time at the first service this morning, we still do the noisy offering during the opening hymn. Well, let's just do it now so we can really make the noise. Do it now, I, that's right. You could make noise during the opening hymn, though. That's our singing noise. Oh, that's our singing noise. The last announcement is to remember to use the pads found on, in your pew, the communion pads, and please sign them and let us know that you've been to worship. If you're visiting, uh, please give us your name and address too so we may send you something. If you have a prayer concern or an insight or a question, also write that on there and give it to the ushers during the, offer during the offering. Are there any other announcements that need to be made at this time? I could think of one last announcement as we listen to the good noise. And that announcement is here during July and August. Every Sunday has a special theme starting next Sunday. That's the patriotic theme. Uh, remember to invite friends to come to worship. And then the other Sundays is a, a theme that's uh, led by a committee or a team that serves here at St. John's. They're sharing what their purpose is, and then between worship services, we're trying to create also a crowd and an understanding of their purpose, so we'll meet them between the services down in the dining hall. Please plan on attending as often as you can to be aware of their service to St. John and community. We prepare ourselves for worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and use the dialogue together found in the bulletin. God says, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Come, you who have no money, come, buy and eat. We have come to feast on the living bread that we might minister to the world's hungers. We have come to drink from the waters of life that we might minister to the world's thirst. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Let us worship God, the source of every blessing. Amen. 
we sing all are welcome, 641. The service continues in the front of the hymnal, page 204. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you and also with you.
be with you. We pray together the prayer of the day, gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We rest. The first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 13, verses 3 through 10. Moses said to the people, Remember this day on which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Because the Lord brought you out from there by strength of hand, no leavened bread shall be eaten. Today, in the month of Abib, you are going out. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, which he swore to your ancestors to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey, you shall keep this observance in this month. For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day there shall be a festival to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten for seven days. No leavened bread shall be seen in your possession, and no leavened bread shall be seen among you in all your territory. You shall tell your child on that day, it is because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. It shall serve for you as a sign on your hand and as a reminder on your forehead, so that the teaching of the Lord may be on your lips. For with a strong hand the Lord brought you out of Egypt. You shall keep this ordinance at its proper time from year to year. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from the book of John, chapter 6, verses 27 through 35. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Bo Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel for the third Sunday after Pentecost is from John, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. 
He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. And after this, he said to him, follow me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rest. <coughs> Pastor Jean, what are you up to? Uh, I'm just getting ready for our service this morning. Oh, you are, but uh, this, you're supposed to be giving a sermon at this time. Today is to be all about Holy Communion. So I thought maybe, just maybe, by bringing some ordinary things like fresh baked bread right out of the oven and some grapes, maybe we could squash the grapes and ferment them. Probably we won't have time for that, okay? Altar Guild will still need the wine, the regular wine. Yeah, but the Altar Guild has already prepared everything. I know, I know, but. I just, I, I just wanted something visual, something that we could, we could see and, and we could smell and we could touch um, to, to get a better understanding of this miracle, the sacrament of Holy Communion. Uh, again, understanding of what? Well, understanding like, like consubstantiation. The four elements, the bread, the wine, the body, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, the sacrament of Holy Eucharist, sacrament of thanksgiving, the meal together, the Lord's Supper. I just wanted to... You want to cover all of that now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I know it's a mystery, but uh, you know Luther tried. Luther tried, oh. and I learned it in confirmation. How many remember those words that you memorized in confirmation? How about oh, well, oh, if there it, he let's goes. let's use his words then. Let's go there first. Oh, okay. Let's see if we could All summarize right. we'll it. We'll see what Luther said. You have a small catechism in your pew, or turn to the back of your red hymnal. In the back of the red hymnal, it's 1,166, called the Sacrament of the Altar, 1,166. And I believe in the small catechism, it's page 33. And I'll just read through it for us. Hmm. <clears throat> 1166 or 33. What is the sacrament of the altar? Well, it is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ under the bread and wine instituted by Christ himself for us, for us Christians, to eat and to drink. Where is this written? Well, the holy evangelists, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and St. Paul, write thus, In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, the, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. What is the benefit of such eating and drinking? The words given for you and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin, show us that forgiveness of sin, life, and salvation are given to us in the sacrament through these words, because where there is forgiveness of sin, there is also life and salvation. How can bodily eating and drinking do such a great thing? 
Eating and drinking certainly do not do it, but rather the words that are recorded, given for you and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. These words, when accompanied by the physical eating and drinking, are the essential thing in the sacrament. And whoever believes these very words has what they declare and state, namely, forgiveness of sin. Who then receives this sacrament worthily? Fasting and bodily preparation are, in fact, a fine external discipline, but a person who has faith in these words given for you and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin is really worthy and well prepared. However, a person who does not believe these words or doubts them is unworthy and unprepared because the words for you require truly believing hearts. Oh, and we used to add, this is most certainly true. And we used to add, this we is most to add certainly that. Yes, true. Yes, I remember that. Remember it well. And I remember that too, and still I have my days where I struggle, and I don't know if you can really define and help us see the miracle. And you know, that reminds me. Reminds me of a story of a young lady who was part of the campus ministry that I did many years ago at the University of Tulsa. She was a student and she had so many questions. Questions about her faith, questions about forgiveness, and yes, questions about the sacraments. Well, college is a time of searching for answers, looking for under, better understanding. You want some grapes? <laughs> oh, they're good. They're very good. All right, just one, Pastor Peter. Okay, all right. Well, let me tell you that story, Pastor Peter, about this young lady in campus ministry who had the questions. Because one of the main questions that really bothered her was about the sacrament. How can this be? Now, she was baptized and confirmed in the Lutheran Church, in fact, in Minnesota, so she was a good Lutheran. There she was down south and wondering what what does this mean now she knew all the right words she had memorized what does this mean the sacrament of the altar she had learned all the words she could use calm substantiation and body and blood and and she knew she knew the words but she still didn't understand. In fact, she went off to some different denominations to see what they said about the holy sacrament, the holy meal. And there was a congregation that she went to, a parish, and it was explained as, yes, there is bread and there is wine, and then there is transubstantiation, meaning that it became the body and blood of Christ in the holy meal. Yes, that's good. That's good. She believed that. And then she went to a congregation and they said, oh, these are mystical symbols. And we really don't know what happens, but they're mystical symbols of Christ's love for us. Well, that's good. That's very good. Then she went to a congregation and they said, this is a meal of remembrance. For Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. So it is bread and it is wine taken in remembrance, in memory of what our Lord and Savior did for us, gave his life for us. She didn't have a problem with any of them. She knew in her heart what it meant for her, but she still had these questions of how, how can this happen? And after many, many talks and many talks, she just kind of stepped back and said, I guess it's enough that I believe. 
And that's what we heard in Luther's, is that it is in your heart when it says given for you, shed for you, if you're a believer in your heart, then it is good. It is a miracle. But she still wondered how. She thought to herself, you know, I'm going home on break. And I'm going to ask my grandmother. For she looked to her grandmother as a very faithful, faithful person. She had gone to communion with her many times, and she knew that her grandma had prepared her heart and her mind and her soul for the sacrament of Holy Communion. She prayed. She prayed before she went to church, and she prayed all through the service before the sacrament. At the time of the sacrament, she came very reverently forward and received the sacrament, the bread and the wine. And then I remember that she would leave with a smile on her face. Not a ha-ha-ha smile, but a knowing smile, knowing that Christ was there for her in the bread and wine. She knew that. So she was going to her grandmother. Her grandmother was not really one of those churchy grandmas, you know, old ladies who sit quietly and fold their hands and say very pious things. No, that's not the kind of grandmother she had. She had a grandmother who had a commitment to what she believed, and that is how she lived. This grandma had been one of those who had led the congregation into having communion every Sunday rather than once a quarter, once a week, every other week. She had gone through all of that to a point where now they communed each and every Sunday. She had also been one of the first women who distributed the elements. She took it very serious, this sacrament of Holy Communion. She took church very serious, but with joy. And she also took her family very seriously. And at holiday time, everyone gathered at Grandma's house. And Christmas Eve, oh, unbelievable. And Easter, oh my goodness, everyone would come. Or the birthday parties, it was a joy to go to Grandma's house. For everyone knew that Grandma would have baked her homemade bread, she would have made cakes and cookies all ready for the family. And it was those things that made it so special, so special to go to Grandma's house. Some people even said that her bread, her cakes, her cookies had something distinct about them, just a little different. They felt that Grandma had put something very special into her baking. She went home, but it was a busy, busy time, and she did not find just the moment to sit down with Grandma and ask these serious questions about the Lord's Supper. Time passed. A few months, and Grandma died. As the Bible would say, she was old and full of day. She lived a good life, and she goes on living in the embrace of our Lord. And this young lady came to me and she said, I can't ask her. She's gone. 
and we cried together and we prayed together and we talked about the questions that she longed to ask her grandmother but she felt like she had really missed missed that opportunity to have that theological discussion about faith and the sacraments and the church with her grandmother. Then, several Sundays on down the line, she was in church, and the gospel that day was from John 6, which you heard this morning. And the words that Jesus said literally were like fireworks in her head and in her heart for she heard the words Jesus said I am the bread of life whoever eats of this bread will never die Jesus said I am the bread of life there's the answer Jesus is the bread of life. The answer was right there in John 6, and she was so excited. And when she got home that afternoon, she took out her Bible, and she had a concordance in the back of her Bible, and she looked up all the scripture lessons about Jesus and bread and Jesus and feeding the people, Jesus and the disciples at table together. And she was overwhelmed with these wonderful, wonderful scripture lessons. Jesus is the bread of life. When she came to the the story of Jesus and the disciples feeding the 5,000 by the Sea of Galilee, that was just about too much. And she thought to herself, oh my word, this is one of the first communions. Yeah, there, there was the bread and, and, and surely there were some wine or water and there were fish. This was a meal broken for 5,000 broken for them by Christ himself. Jesus is the bread of life. And after this study time, she had another idea. And she went to her freezer, and she opened it up, and she looked around, and you know, her freezer was just like all of ours. There was the frozen orange juice over here, and, and there were some leftovers from who knows when, but we're sure not going to throw them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there was that little package of mystery meat. We have no idea what it is, but again, we shouldn't throw it out. No, no, no. And there in the back of the refrigerator was a large package about this size covered with crystals, you know, the ice crystals. And she took it out of the freezer and she took it over to the sink and she gently brushed off those crystals from the bag. And then she opened it up and she pulled out a loaf of bread. One of the last loaves that her grandma had baked before she passed away. She took the loaf and very carefully she sliced off two slices she put them on a plate and put them in the microwave, set it on low so it wouldn't get too dried out, and ready to eat. Took it out and spread it with butter. And then she poured herself a cup of tea. 
and she sat down at the table and ate her bread and drank her tea. And it was as if Grandma was there. Grandma was there. Grandma was there in the bread. For yes, Grandma did put something into everything she baked. And that was her love. Her love was in that bread. Grandma was truly present in the breaking of bread. There's the answer. Whether it's at the table in your kitchen, whether it's me serving you in your home, in your living room, whether it's here in our worship together, celebrating the Holy Sacrament, whether it's Jesus on the hillside with the disciples overlooking the Sea of Galilee, breaking bread, whether it's Jesus and his disciples at the Last Supper in the upper room, Jesus says to us, there I am. For God put something special into everything he creates. And in that bread and in that wine is his greatest love of all. And that is his son, Jesus given for us, given for each and every one of us for the forgiveness of sin and for the promise of everlasting life. Jesus is the bread of life. Christ is present in the breaking of the bread Christ is present in the drinking of the wine. Christ is present in this holy sacrament. Does that help, Pastor Peter? Does it? Yep, oh. I think so. Did you have anything you wanted to say? Nope. Oh, would you like to pray with us? Sure. All right, please lead us in prayer. I think that's a very helpful sermon. Something you'll remember and can contemplate and think upon again and share with your family. Also, a good way to prepare for communion is to pray before communion. And you can use this prayer found in the front of your hymnal, uh, page 72. We can pray that together, page 72. I stole your book, didn't I? I have it. There you go. Together we pray the one before Holy Communion. Let us pray, merciful God, we do not, not presume, presume to come to, to your table trusting in our, our own righteousness, righteousness but, but in, in your abundant, abundant mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat and drink the body and blood of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, that we may live in him and he in us, now and forever. Amen. 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 We sing the hymn of the day, 485. I am the bread of life. And if you're able, please stand so we can fill our lungs and really sing this beautiful, beautiful hymn. I am the bread of life, you who come. 
come to me shall not hunger, and who believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless the Father beckons, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up. Let us rest and pray. We pray with the whole people of God in Christ Jesus. We pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Merciful God, you have revealed your might with compassionate healing. Strengthen your church that the healing power of Christ may be known throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the mending of all creation, for the health of waterways and soil, for the cleansing of the air, and for renewed commitment to care for your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the health of the nations, for peace, for just governments, and for healing in those sick with greed or hate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the healing of the sick, especially sick children and their parents, 
We pray too for nurses and doctors, for those without health care, and for all who suffer alone. We especially pray for baby Kenton, Evelyn, Walker, Pastor Gary. We pray for those families who walk in the dark valleys of grief and sadness. We remember the families of Jean, Walter, William. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to celebrate the baptism of Merrick Cochran. Continue to bless him and his family as they are celebrating this weekend the new life in Christ. Continue to bless the journey with the news, good news of Jesus, his Easter, his promise of forgiveness, his promise for renewal always. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for health in our relationships at home, work, and school, and for the health of our congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, you are near to us when we cry out to you. Into your embrace we commend all for whom we pray, through Christ, by the power of your Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Take time and share this peace. We receive our offerings and sacrifices of a new week.
stand and sing. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. For on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trust as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The feast is ready, and all are welcome. Just a reminder this morning, there is gluten-free wafer that will be on the baptismal font. And if you would like to take a break this morning, just for fun, it is there for you also. So come now, the feast is ready.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in his peace. Amen. We pray, we give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life and in your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are sent singing a closing hymn God be with you till we meet again. So go into the world and do good. Do not return evil with evil. Support the suffering, help the weak, and honor all in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 536, we rise. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks,